Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, before we get started, um, do you have any question? Um, professor, I have a question. Sure, yeah. Um, I, it's about the attendance. I was just wondering, because I remember you said something about like the chat room, but then I was like, wait, there's no like um, thing for me to type in. So I was wondering, do you just screenshot like the participants? Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, yes, I did. Oh, okay. I just okay. had a participant, yeah. So you see, uh, that's why the screen name should match with your real name. So uh, I have a good idea who attending, who attended class. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Any other questions? Does it say my name on the one that I'm on right now? Because I'm on my phone. Uh, yes, yes, Elsa, right? Yeah, okay, Elsa. thank you. Yeah, your name is here, definitely. You're good, yes. Okay, uh, if I have a question, I'll let you know. Let's say I can't figure out your name, match your name with the roster, I will let you know. So um, in a breakout room, you know, I usually will check that and make sure I have everybody on attendance. Okay. Um, yes, any other question? Okay. Um, so if you want to meet with me on Wednesday, right, please uh, send me an email either Let's say you want to meet this Wednesday. Let me know the, uh, by the end of the class, or you can also uh, email me before Wednesday, right? Anytime before Wednesday, so I can prepare for that. And just one quick uh, reminder about that. And we're gonna um, summarize about chapter two today. So, uh, and then I'm gonna show you some uh, some of the important techniques you can utilize in Excel, uh, like constructing the histogram and constructing a pie chart, those popular charts. Okay, but uh, let's get to the summary of the content really quickly. So check, uh, So basically when you have a survey, right? We, you, you conduct a survey, you collect the data, and then the next step is a summarizing and graphing the data. So basically you um, summarize the data and take a look at the nature of the data, also the distribution of the data and you'll be able to get a lot of information out of the, um, the, graph, the graph part. So chapter two is actually serve this purpose, summarizing and graphing data. And it's still under the descriptive statistics, descriptive statistics. There are five important elements in descriptive statistics. First one is cost center. Second one is covariation. Third one is called distribution. So once you graph the data, you'll be able to get a sense of distribution of the data. And then fourth one is outlier. So, okay, so outlier is, it's like a distractor in your data set. Once you identify the outlier, it should always try to get rid of it, right? Because it will mislead your, um, the result from the data. Get rid of it. And the fifth one is the time. And then when time changes, you know, the data, the characteristic of the data may changes. Sometimes, you know, once the time pass by, you know, some of the data becomes uh, obsolete, meaning it becomes useless. And that's usually, uh, that's the meaning of this. So in the mnemonics for this is CV DOT, right? Okay, so we summarize the descriptive, the descriptive statistics and then um, center variation, we're gonna take a look at it in chapter three. And uh, today we're gonna look at how we'll identify distribution of the data uh, and also the possible, let's identify some outliers, but those are the most important elements in this descriptive statistics. So under this um, chapter two, the most important thing is what we call the um, frequency distribution table. Okay. So you're gonna, once you have the data set and based on the needs of the, of your research study, you usually will use a a typical method called frequency distribution table to categorize the, the data and put into different classes. Yeah. 
Now um, I'm going to use a um, actual example from the from the Blackboard, and then we're going to run through an analysis step by step, so to help you better understand this topic. So you can um, log on to the Blackboard. Okay, go to our Blackboard course. Okay, let me just share one more time, and I want you to open uh, one of the Excel file. Okay, here we go. And let's go to the Excel practice. Excel practice right here. Okay. Right underneath the Excel project submission. And today you're gonna to finish the Excel project number one, right? I will I will post the Excel project number two once you finish that. And then you can get started on Excel project number two. Okay, um, let's open that Excel practice. And let's open the here's the grand demo, right? This file. So basically, you're going to see a data set about temperatures. Okay. Let's first of all uh, look at the data set really quickly. Let me share the screen. Okay. Here we go. So this data represents the actual high temperature for 14 consecutive days. And you're going to use these 14 uh, high temperatures to construct uh, histogram using four classes. So the procedure to construct the histogram, um, I'm gonna uh, show you the summary of that, okay, in a second. So we start with the uh, number of, decide on the number of classes. Okay, so this is step number one. Uh, frequency distribution, distribution table is the basis for the histogram, right? So once you have a frequency distribution table, you get a histogram. Step one to construct the histogram is decide on number of classes. Classes is like interval, right? You decide on the interval for each class representing um, that particular portion of the numbers or data from your data set. And then after that, we will come up with the class width, right? Um, second one. Calculate a class width, decide on a class width. So basically, uh, it's maximum value or largest value minus minimum value in your data set and dividing by number of classes. So in the actual case, usually we'll deal with the decimal numbers, right? You, so you here, you always run up. So uh, the result of this usually is a decimal number. So you run up. Next whole number. So this is one of the a very important thing. I will show you why this is important to run up to next whole number. Um, in order to in order to proceed with the yeah. and the first step is come up with a and the first uh, lower class limit for the first class. And then fourth step is come up with all uh, create or upper class limit. And then the next step is tally the data and you're gonna, so each data will find a place to go, right? Find a class or interval to, to go. So tally the data and create the classes. It should be on your PowerPoint, right? So you don't just pay attention to all this detailed um, calculation later on and give a, uh, get a better idea how to conduct this. So that's basically uh, the overall procedure, you know, to come up with a 
frequency distribution table. And after that, we create a histogram. So now let's go back. We're gonna follow this particular step and we're gonna work on the, the Excel, um, the file, right? Now we're gonna work on this. So first of all, um, when you have a data set, you always need to um, range the data in the increasing order, meaning you put in put a data values in the increasing orders. And in Excel, when you have a large data set, you, you always want to input in, into the Excel. And from there, we can easily <clears throat> sort it and put it into increasing orders by just highlight those numbers. And then you see um, here, sort and filter. And you can sort smallest to largest, right? So now you'll be able to see what is the smallest value here and then the largest value here, okay? So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do it by hand first. And after that, we come back to the Excel. I, I will show you the operations in Excel. Right? So um, quickly jump back, but uh, you should sort the data first, right? Okay. So now let's go back to the, this. Okay, so let's continue on our demonstration, how to create a histogram here. Now, um, I want you to list the data values on, on paper. If you have a note, list it on a note data set. So the first number is 51, 59, next number, 60, 61, 62, I basically just copy all the numbers from the Excel file. Okay, 64. Obviously, it's in increasing order. So that brings a lot of convenience in terms of pro proceed to next step. 75, 76, 80, 85, and 89. Okay, let's make sure it's 14 numbers, right? Because the sample size here is A equal to 14. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. So we're good. So now let's run through the step number one, right? Step number one is decide on the number of classes. And then in the Excel file already tell us we want four classes, right? So that's classes, decide on that, it's four, okay. Now step number two is deciding the class width, meaning the length of the class. So class width. So class width equal to maximum value. In this case, it's 89 minus minimum value over number of classes, which is four, right? We already decide on that number of classes. Okay, so here go, we get 89 minus 51 divided by four. So this turned out to be 38 um, by four. Now, as I mentioned, right, we, we usually would deal with the decimal numbers. So in this case, it has, it will be a decimal number, 38 by four should be 9.5. However, we cannot use a decimal number. So in this case, we typically will run up run up to next whole numbers. Even though if, if it is just 9.1 here, we still run up to next whole numbers, so make it 10. So um, in that case, we'll be able to cover all these numbers, make sure every single uh, number in this, in this data set will have a place to go. Uh, if you use 9.5 or nine, even if you run down to nine, then some of the number, especially those large numbers, will have no place to go. So that's why um, we always run up to next whole numbers. Okay. And um, all right, so now um, we step, we on step two, we design class width. And next thing is come up with the first lower class limit. Okay. So in the first lower class limit, um, you could use the, you see the minimum value here. So usually we could use the minimum value in the data set which is 51. So in this case, if you use 51 as a first lower class limit, that's fine, right? 
you can always use the minimum as a first lower class limit. Okay, so here 51, this is. So um, now once you have that, then we'll be able to come up with the upper class limit. Okay, so think about this. So, um, so the first upper class limit So since the starting point is 51, and we want, we want the class width to be 10, so the first upper class limit should be 60, because between 51 and 60, there are 10 numbers. So this 10 guide us to, guide us to find the first upper class limit, this. And then um, also, if you feel like, um, you, you, you're not sure whether y is 10, I mean, y is 60, you can also do this. You can assume, okay, this is just a calculation process, right? You can assume this first up class limit is x. So we're talking about 50 to x. However, we want, we want class width to be 10, right? So that means we do x minus 51, adding one, the reason why we're adding one because we want to include the first number 51 here and then we make sure it's 10. Okay. So that's basically, um, that's how you decide on a, a class width. So this is X minus 50 equal to 10. Now you add 50 from both side equation. Now you get 60, X equals 60. And that's how we come up with the first upper class limit. You can also count it, right? Like from 51 to 60, there are 10 numbers there. And you wanna make sure um, it matches with the class width. Yeah. All right, um, any questions so far? Okay, very good. So now once you have the first lower class limit, now you can, since we have five, then we just add 10 to the first lower class limit, limit to get next one. So next uh, lower class limit should be 61, then 71 and 81. Since we have four classes, we have all of that. And then for all, once we get a first upper class limit, then using the class width at 10 to 60, get 70, at 10 to 70, get 80, and at 10 to 80, you get 90, okay. All right, so we get all the lower class limit and all the upper class limit. Okay. And then um, after that, we, yeah, so we basically have the classes now, right? So um, step five is just tally the data and then put into the, um, tally the data and then put into the classes, right? And create the classes. So basically we, come up with a frequency distribution table. So following is a frequency distribution table. So uh, it's like a table, right? So um, we create a, we need four classes, including the title. So the first title is classes. Second one is frequencies. Okay. And the first class will be 51 to 60, right? That's 10, class with the 10, okay, got that. And the second one is from 61 to 70, and that's also 10, right? You can just subtracting 61 from 70, adding one. That will give you the class, uh, how many numbers within the, within the class, within the interval. Also, it will give you the class width. And so the 61 to 70, next class. Next class is 71 to 80. And the very, very last class, okay, let me just revise this. It's 81 to 90. Okay, then we have a uh, entire classes, okay, listed. 80, okay. And 81 to 90, and that last class is. Now, um, in order to figure out the frequency, we have to go 
up to the original data set and then counting how many data fall in the first class from 51 to 60, right? So you look at this 51 to 60, um, three numbers, right? Okay, that means the first class has a frequency of three. And that's what we mean by tally the data and then counting how many numbers fall in the first class. So in this case, it should be three. So we go back here, put in three here. And then second class is from 61 to 70. And that one has, has more, right? So go up again, go to our original data set. And you're counting how many data between 61 and 70. So you see it's here. So you're counting how many data there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six numbers uh, for in the uh, second interval, second class. All right. And that's why putting put into the increasing order helps a lot. So you don't have to juggle around numbers to figure out um, the frequency for that specific class. Now the next one is 71 to 80. Okay. So go to 71 all the way to 80. Again, there are three numbers for in this class. Okay, so we put in three down here. Okay. Now the very last class will include all the numbers, right? So make sure your ending number here, the last upper class is bigger than the, the maximum here. If that's not the case, meaning your class width is, is off, you should use a bigger class width to cover this. And that's why I always run up, right? To make sure it covers all the numbers here. Okay. Because in this case, if you pick nine as a, as a class width, then this last number 89 will have nowhere to go. That, that defeats the purpose of creating this frequency distribution table because we'll make sure every single data could be categorized in a specific uh, class. Okay. So last class has two numbers, right? Last two numbers. Very good. So here you go. And then make sure you double check, right? Once you create in a frequency distribution table, you double check, make sure we have a um, that's counting the total frequency here. So it's 9, 12, 14, right? So meaning uh, 14. So total frequency equal 14, which means, remember our sample size is 14. So this should match with the sample size. Okay. We'll make sure every single data has, has a place to go. So, um, 14 should be confirmed, right? The same as the sample size. Okay. Any questions so far? All right, very good. So now um, let's create it. So this is what we call a frequency distribution table. Okay, we got that. Now we're gonna uh, create a histogram based on a frequency distribution table. Now um, we basically just so here's a grant is in the graphical representation of the frequency distribution table. So from the table, we already get an idea of distribution, right? So we know that three numbers fall in the first class, most numbers fall in the second class. So we have most numbers within the second interval, 61 to 70, right? It's almost like, almost like half of the entire uh, sample size. And we have three numbers for in this one, two numbers for in the last class. So you get a, a rough idea how that goes, but a histogram will give us better idea. So here histogram is a graphical representation of the frequency distribution data table. How to visualize this right? of the frequency distribution table? Okay, 
So we got that. Just quickly remind you what a histogram is. So now um, we create this bar chart, right? Something like this. Okay. So with X, Y axis, on the X axis is what we call the classes, right? And since they have the same class width, so we're gonna use a, um, let's say this is one unit, two unit, same unit, right? Should, this unit should have equal size, equal length. Okay, so we just actually putting all these classes on a horizontal axis, okay? So the first class goes here 61 to 70. And second one is from uh, 71 to 80. No, actually, my bad. It's from 51 to 60 first. So I skip a class. Okay, so 51 to 60 first, first class. Second class from 61 to 70. No, 61 to, yeah, that's right. And then 71 to 80 and then 81 to 90. Okay. And the vertical axis is the frequencies. So frequency, as you can see, the maximum frequency is six, right? So the maximum height is six unit and then minimum height is two unit. So six unit would do it on a vertical axis. So we're gonna create six units here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I do it by hand. It's a little bit, you know, it's not that perfect, but uh, once we uh, conduct in Excel, it will, it will be much more accurate. Okay, now we just start creating this uh, rectangle box, right? So for the first class is 51 to 60, frequency three. So you're gonna create this rectangle box right here. Here you go. So you're gonna shade it, you can do that, right? You can shade it. All right, so that's first class re represent with the frequency represented by a rectangle box. And the second one is 61 to 70 with the frequency six. Similarly, we're gonna create a rectangle box. And uh, yeah, if, if you want, you can shade it, right? Okay, second rectangle box. And the third one still, right? 71 to 80, frequency is three. Okay, so we get that. Okay, still rectangle box. And then the last class, I should probably erase this really quickly. Okay, let's draw this one. Okay, there you go. And the last one is just frequency of two, so it will be here. Okay, um, now you can see, you know, how the data values distributed um, over all these different classes. And then you know where the data is most concentrated, right? It's definitely right here. So you can put a frequency on top, you could do that to give a better idea how that goes. And that's basically how you create a histogram and from the original data values, right? So here you go, we have an original data set and run through the procedure, right? Step by step and get that. And that technical part is getting the first upper class limit, right? And this is this one requires some tweak. So make sure you know how to get that, right? Um, now after that, you know, we create a table, frequency distribution table. Now we just uh, convert a table into a graph. And this graph is what we call a histogram, right? Histogram, it's a graphical representation of the frequency distribution table. Okay. Okay, um, so, any question about this, the whole process? Okay. Um, and also, um, we could create a, a 
uh, pie chart right out of this frequency distribution table. Um, I'm also going to show you that since pie chart is pretty popular, you know, um, graph as well. So right here, in order to create a pie chart, we're going to uh, use the this table, and then we're going to calculate the percentage, right? Percentage of each uh, class by dividing the frequency by the total frequency to get a percentage. Now, once you have that, we'll be able to generate a pie chart. So similarly, let's copy the table one more time. Start with classes and frequencies. Class, second one, third one, and the fourth one. So 51 to 60, that's three, right? And 61 to 70, that's six. And 71 to 80, that's three. And 81 to 90, that's also, that's two, right? So we know that total frequency is 14. So uh, we need another column, I guess, um, in terms of percentage. So percentage. In order to get a percentage, you do three divided by 14 times 100%. And then you put into the calculator of Excel, get an actual percentage. So let's see what that is. So three by 14, that turned out to be 21, approximately 21%. Okay, so it's close to, I just run into a whole percent. Uh, although the it has infinitely many decimal places, right? So six over 14 times 100%. Let's see what that is. Should be twice as much. So approximately 42%, but let me double check. Yeah, it's 43%, right? Because run up to the next whole percent will be 43%. And the next one is three over 14, that's 100%. That's still 21% approximately. The last one is two over 14 times 100%. And that turned out to be approximately, let's see what that is. It's 14.2, so let's uh, use 14%. Yeah, so um, 14%. Yep, so we get all of this. So now we could just uh, create a pie chart out of this uh, rough percentage, right? So um, basically the pie chart, so you draw a circle, right? And now it's not perfect. Again, it's not very good. <laughs> so the first class is about 20%. The, the third class is also about 20%. So 20% is one fifth of the entire. So if you split this into four and one fifth should be very close to this. I guess this is quarter, and it's less than a quarter, right? So that's somewhere like that. Okay. So this is about 20, 21%. So first class 51 to 60. If you want, you can put down 21%. And uh, second class is 43%, 61 to 70. And that's close to 50%, right? If let's say this is 50%, then it should be somewhere here. So if you draw it by hand, you, it's not, you can't get a perfect, perfect um, pr proportion, right? So, so this is 43%, 61 to 70, 43%. And then third class is 21%. So still it's right. It's like the same as this one. So I guess we will do, uh, yeah, so just draw this. Okay. Right, so this approximately the same. This is third class, 71 to 80, that's 21%. And last class, it's 14%. So the, the remaining goes to last class, 81 to 90, that's 14%. Now we just basically split entire entire circle into four different classes with a proper percentage. Okay, so that's how we construct a pie chart. So percentage, um, some, some 
you know, textbook will ask you to calculate the degree, right? How many degree this, and then use protractor to measure the degree. So in order to get a degree um, occupied by, by, the, by each class, you just multiply the percentage by degree, right? 360 degrees, 360 degrees, multiply that by 360 degrees, and you get a corresponding degree measurement and then use a protractor um, to measure all those um, degree with the proper classes. And that's also, that probably more accurate, right? If you have a protractor, you could do that. But we just need a rough sketch of the pie chart then this is good enough. Also, we're gonna, um, we're gonna do it in Excel. And then in Excel, we're gonna get a much, uh, get a perfect graph basically. We won't have any like uh, running errors or like off a little bit somewhere, you know, so we will get a perfect graph. Okay. So now um, that's basically um, what we have about uh, when you, in terms of doing that by hand, right? Step by step, that's how we do it. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it in Excel. So let's go to the, this file right here. Okay. So remember we saw the data already Excel file, okay. And then we saw the data value already. Now we need to create a frequency distribution table, okay, from this. So now you're gonna highlight the data, okay. And then go to insert, and you're gonna insert a pivot table. I'm gonna show you the, uh, the most convenient way of doing this. Um, so it's using a pivot table. So now you wanna create a pivot table, okay. All right, so um, you uh, know we're gonna put into the existing worksheet, okay? So right here, put in the existing worksheet. And pick location, right? So click on this, you see red direction arrow. And you could, you could just put it here, right? I put in the F6, do that if you want to. And then go back and now um, click on OK. All right, so the, and then the pivot table will come up. Okay, so we get a pivot table. Now you wanna, next thing, okay, everybody get this pivot table really quickly. Now click on temperatures, right? And then you're gonna um, put this into the, the call, the, the row, okay? And then you're gonna see this, right? So now the data was categorized using this, um, each individual data values, right? So now, Go to the row here, click on group. Okay, click on group. That's how we come up with the classes. Okay, so now you're starting with the 81, right? Ending at the 89 by 10, meaning class using class width of 10. That's exactly what we are doing by hand, right? So class width is 10. Now, once you grouping using this particular um, job, the, Windows and then you should be, you should, you should be good, right? So click on OK. Now here you go, we get four classes, right? Exactly the same as what we have when we did it by hand. Okay, now, now we need to um, also change this. So now click on this, go to um, value field settings, right? And then right click on the, this each individual frequency, right? And you see value field settings click on that. Now you're gonna see, we don't want to sum, right? We want it, We want to Excel to count it, count how many data is falling in the first class, how many data is falling in the second class, etc. So we, we do count, right? So the, for, the formula we are using is count, count of the temperatures, okay? So here you go, so now we do, okay. Here you go, so now we have these proper frequencies. All right, so if you want to change the label here, right? Change the row label to classes. Okay, and then to the second label to, oh yeah, we can change it here, right? Now we can call it frequency. And click on okay. All right, so now we get this nice, neat table. If you want, I organize that a little bit, just like what I usually do, right? Go to home, um, put in all borders. And usually I will center that. 
I, I like body, so I bought it. Okay, same thing for that, right? So we can just center that. We can center the entire table here. All right. Okay. Yeah. So are you guys following? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. Very good. Uh, so actually, this is uh, some kind of technical part. So I want to go slow. So make sure everybody got it. So now, uh, next thing we're going to create a um, histogram out of this, right? So this is what we call a frequency distribution table. Okay, we got that. Very good. Very nice step. Distribution table. So now we're going to convert a table to a histogram, right? To the graph. So we call this graph representation of the table. So once, once we do that, we're good to go. So here we go. So we highlight the table. Do not include a grand total, right? 14. Don't include that. Just the classes frequency all the way to the last class. Okay. Now, once we have that, go to insert. Then you're going to click on the right here, insert column chart. Now you want to insert a 2D column, right? Like the first option right here. <clears throat> now the important thing is modifying this table, right? So first of all, when you look at this table, you see most important thing is we don't want gap. So for the histogram, there's no gap in between those classes. So we want to reduce the gap first. Okay. So now close out that, click on this. Um, click on each rectangle box and then right click on it. You're going to see a um, format data series. You see the last option down on the, down on the drop down menu. Click on that. Okay. So now um, one thing we want to do is reduce the gap, right? So here gap width, it should reduce to 0%. Okay. So here we go. So now you see for rectangle box, just like how we did it by hand, although it's not that perfect, right? When we did it by hand, but uh, um, in Excel, it's it's a lot better, right? You, you will see a very sophisticated graph. And also, once you do that, you see this border is not very obvious, right? So it's kind of, we lose the border. So you also need to fix that. So again, highlight, highlight the thing, Highlight one of those rectangle box and go to, um, okay, fill and you see vary colors by point. Okay, if you click on that, now here you go. Uh, now each one of these rectangle box will appear in different colors. Now we'll be able to easily identify the border here. Okay. So that's one way to do it, right? You can also go to border here. And then you can also put in different like, see, let's say put in this, okay. So um, make sure it's transparent, right? So 100% transparent and that, and you wanna put solid line. Now let's see um, if the border changes to different. Okay, so now one more time, change the Border to this color. I'm going to use this color, 100% transparent. Okay, no, it still doesn't come out. All right, maybe this fill color. Okay, you've changed to different colors. So here is how you change to different colors. And let's see, let's all modify the, the border, see if that works. Okay, here you go. Maybe, yeah, it works. So I change to the same color, right? For all four different ones. And you can pick the one you like, right? So this is background. Okay. Transparent. No, 100%. Yep. And you change to this. Okay. And then definitely you can, if you want, you can change different backgrounds, all this. So you can play around with it, right? Again, there are a lot of things you can do in the in this um, histogram here. I'm gonna show you one you one way to do it, right? But there are so many things you can do here. And also, I want to show you a couple more things. First of all, is 
uh, access titles, right? So we want to, if you want to put in the access titles, let's say um, this representing the classes. We can do that. Okay, we, we will get that, right? And also the Y axis, it's frequencies. So you can change it to a proper titles here. Again, a lot of things you can modify here, you know, you can modify the font size, right? And uh, you can even put a color associated with uh, each individual axis, right? You can bold it, you know, do a lot of things on, on the vertical axis. Same thing for the horizontal axis. And can put in different size, you know, with the different colors, if you want to separate them, you know, with the different colors, you can do that. And also even you can change the title, right? <clears throat> so let's say, um, temperature, high temperatures. Just uh, create a title for this high temperatures using histogram, right? Separate using histogram. Then change the color if you want to something different. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's basically um, how you would do this. Um, here's a gram in Excel. Again, we have so much more options, right? To make it a very uh, nice table and nice graph and also um, make it stand out. Okay. And that's how we um, modify this um, histogram. Okay. And the pie chart, um, in order to create a pie chart out of um, this frequency distribution table, so just highlight all those, right? The classes and also the frequencies and it goes in, go to insert. And then you, you put in this pie chart, right? Here you go, this one. Insert pie and down, the, down this chart. And you can just pick 2D pie, okay? And again, you know, we can pick a different design for this pie chart, right? If you go up here, um, click on design, and you'll be able to pick uh, the design you want, right? So here you go, maybe pick this one. <clears throat> yep, so that's, you can also, you know, modify. It shows percentage, right? Associated with different classes. That's one way, and then some other designs available here. So pick the one you like. Okay, <clears throat> so that's how you create a pie chart out of the frequency distribution table. Okay, all right. Any question or comment about these graphs? Okay, all right, very good. So if you do not have an, any question, I want you to really quickly finish the, the project number one, right? I think I, I, I show you, yeah, finish the project number one. Meanwhile, I will post the project number two. Um, well, while you do, you finish the Excel project number one, and then I will, yeah, I'll, then you can start working on the, um, the project number two. And project number two is it's about creating the histogram and the pie chart First part is about that, right? So you can use whatever we learned so far to, uh, to finish that. <clears throat> and also the second part is from chapter three. I guess I, I will leave it to next week. I will um, summarize the chapter three next week. And I also show you how to calculate all those mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance, and also the z-score, right? From chapter three. Um, so make sure you read through the PowerPoint and the lecture videos, go over the lecture video by, by next Monday. So you, you benefit from our lecture, okay. All right, so in that case, I will put you in the, so again, the second project will be posted here, right? So the first project is due today. <clears throat> so you should get it done by, by the end of the day. And I, if you have any issue with, the, with any questions from the project, let me know. I can work with you 
um, on the breakout room. Okay. And then you will see the second project posted here. Um, maybe let me just quickly do that. And that's your next Monday. Mm, yeah, uh, you can get it done by, I mean, the next second project is, is due by next, next Monday, yes. Or if you need another week, I can give another week, no problem with that, okay. Do we have to stay in the breakout rooms? Uh, yes, um, you, sh you should, because if you have any individual questions, you know, even you have a question from homework or like anything, you know, you want to ask me, it's, um, it's better to keep it individual, uh, in individual conversation, right? But uh, if you do not have any question, you can stay on the main screen with me, no problem. I have no issue with that. But uh, let's say you prefer to work alone and also ask me questions, it's better using a breakout room. Okay. Um, I have one other quick question. Definitely, definitely. Um, we, do we have a quiz due this week? Um, I think the quiz is due by February 11th, is it? Let me I, look I think yeah, so. It yes. is. Okay. okay, right. So chapter two quiz, I think it's due by by Thursday or by Friday, you see, let me see Thursday, right? 11 chapter one. Oh, chapter I think it's chapter one. Okay, okay. So let me double check. I don't, I don't keep track of that, but I can quickly check it for you. We should just be following the like math Excel course guide, right? Exactly, right. That's a due date for all the homework and the quizzes. And it's better following that, but uh, I mean, let me check it for you. So one more time, maybe let me share the screen with you and then explain a little bit more so you have a better idea um, what are you expecting in terms of due date. So one more time, if you click on home test and you see that the due date is in front of it, right? So the orientation section was due by last Thursday. Okay, and then you have homework from chapter one, it's due by February 11th, which is Thursday. And then same thing, the quiz from chapter one is due on February 11th. But don't wait until last minute to do your quiz, right? Remember you have three chances to make it, you know, to make a better score. So let's say you try first time, you're not happy with it, no problem, right? Study a little bit, go back, review the homework assignments, and then you can do the quiz one more time. I'm pretty sure you will get a better grade. So usually it's guaranteed, you know, as soon as you review the content, do it again, you'll get a better grade. And typically three chances will uh, most likely get you a perfect score. So you don't have to, um, if you want a perfect score, right? It's, it's definitely doable with three chances, okay. And again, you should try to follow this. And this due date is not very, you know, usually it's go by a week. So usually you have a week to complete one chapter. And then I will I also remind you, I guess, um, on a weekly basis, when we meet on Monday, I'll let you know, you know, you should get the quiz done by, you know, February 18th for chapter two. But if, if let's say we already, you already reviewed the videos and then the PowerPoint and you feel like you're ready for the quiz, you can try it, right? It doesn't hurt to try it. Um, if you're comfortable, you know, doing all the homework assignments, then you are ready for the actual quiz because they are similar. Okay. All right, any other question about the homework quizzes? Yeah, okay. And the only thing is you have to take the midterm and the final, right, during the class time. Meaning, um, yeah, so um, the quizzes, I let you guys do it on your own. But still, you know, you should work on it yourself, right, independently. You can use a textbook. You can use a calculator, also Excel, or the any formula sheets, right? Those are available, but you do not get help from each other in terms of what you doing the quiz, okay? All right, um, that's homework and quizzes. Okay, so I guess I'll put you in a breakout room really quickly. And then if you have any question, feel free to ask me. Okay, I will work with you on an individual basis. All right.
Hey, Kiara, you have a question? Hi. Yes. Um, I did the project number one, uh -huh. but I have two or like I just have two questions. Can I share my screen to show you? Definitely, definitely. Um, let me okay. share that. Go ahead. You can share your screen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's like I hadn't shared my screen in a really long time. No problem. Take your time. I understand. <laughs> no. Oh, it doesn't let me share my screen because no. of a uh, setting. Um, but for no, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you mm -hmm. for the second for the second problem, which is GX seven. Mm -hmm. Which essentially, when you put in a zero, it gives you zero, but then you add five, right? Yeah, exactly. So division so, by zero. So, so exactly. the answer should be five, right? Because you do get a zero, but then you add five. Or is it undefined? Okay, it should be undefined. If uh, any number divide, divided by zero, mm -hmm. it should be undefined. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But I, uh, so in that one, I had the, the question, like, do you, are you adding five? Because if it's like divided by x plus five, it should be five, right? Or am I just? Yeah, or maybe let's do this. Um, can you email me your project? And yes. I will, I will make correction on the, on the project. So. Yes. Um, so, and I also got like a weird zero, like um, undefined on seven. But I don't know if that's a, a problem for my syntaxes or. Um, okay, I think it's better if you me, share your screen. Yes, I'll, um, yeah. Let's try one more time, see if you could share, share the screen. Um, it's better. Yeah, let me try okay. again. Try one more time. Share screen. Oh, okay, I think yeah, now I can. Can you see it? Okay. Yep, okay. okay. I, can, I can see that, yeah, definitely. So that was, so I have three syntax errors, but this one, I, like this is how I wrote it. And I don't know if that's. Okay, question number two. Um, let me take a look at the original uh, project really quickly. And then um, if you have the right input. Okay, that's project number one. Okay, so let me see. Yeah, you have the right input. That's perfect. It should be division by zero, so it's undefined because x is the denominator. It's in the denominator. Okay. We place x with a zero, and we have a division by zero. Okay. And that's, why, um, that's why it's undefined. Okay. So Good. these three undefined is fine. Like if I have these three as undefined. Yes, it is. That's right. Okay. Just and a last one. I think I'm sorry? seven uh, mm -hmm. the answer is a little bit off. Also, question six, the first one, the answer is off. Okay. It should be three times two, three times negative two should be in the parentheses. Oh. Yeah, because it's exponent, right? So you keep it together. Is that better? One point? I think so. I think so. Yes. Same thing okay. for that. Yeah. And this one, because three times one, yeah, so it's that's perfect. Okay. Okay. And then question seven, the answer is off. The uh, which one? All um, of them. Seven, yes, all of them. So uh, click on one of this. Um, it's a lot of parentheses, so maybe I yeah, forgot exactly. to close one. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Maybe let me do this. So a lot of. A lot of your classmates ask for my help. So mm -hmm. send me an email and send me your uh, project. I will modify your one of your um, one of these question seven answers mm -hmm. and I will email it back to you. Okay. And for part three, part two and part three, did they look good or is it also like way off? Uh, okay. Uh, click on, um, let's say B. Yeah, I think that's good. Just click on. 
Yeah, one of the sound MC formula. Yeah, that's good. Perfect. Okay, this is also good. So you're good. Yes, this graph okay. is good. Yep. And I'll send you this for uh, yeah. by email. Yeah, thank okay. you. Send me that. I will modify that for you and then email back to you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Have a lovely rest of your week. Okay, you too. Okay. Hey, Madison. Hello. You have a question? Yes. I was um, with another one of your classmates, so I just get off. <laughs> no problem. Um, for the lab, like the Excel one lab, mm -hmm. um, number seven, I was having trouble okay. like formatting it because I did it on paper and I got a different answer than I did in Excel. Okay. Do you want to sh share your screen with me? So I can help you with yeah. that. Yeah, share your screen. So let me take a look at it. Okay, very good. Yep, um, yes, seven, eight. It's off, yes, the answer is off. So let's look at it. So um, I'm gonna help you fix one of them. Yeah, click on the, yeah, click, click on B31, all right. So let me see, this is first part is, yes, first part is, you need a parentheses um, for the first four, in front of first four, the first, first four, um, or maybe after the first plus sign, from left to right, right? No, not that. Um, so here you see, it's 4x plus 4 over 3x. So that means this 4 times 3 plus 4 should be in the parentheses. All right. Yeah, very good. And close parentheses after the, the second 4. 4x four plus 4, right? Yeah, good. Close it. And also denominator should be in the parentheses because we're dividing by 3x, right? So 3 times 3 should be in the parentheses, yeah, close it, perfect. So we take care of the first part. Now the second part is four times that. So five minus two X should be in the parentheses. Yeah, close it. Also um, in front of the four and all the way after five, we should put the parentheses because that's a numerator. And then no, after five, yeah, good, divide by. And denominator two times three should be in the parentheses. No, no, two, just two times three. That extra two is on the side, right? So we do not include that. Yep, okay. that should take care of the whole thing. Yes, did you get the same thing while you get 34.5? When you do it by hand. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So you have the right answer. Yes. This okay. Answer. Yeah. So you should fix the a second part and third part, right? The cell. Um, okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Very Thank good. you. Any other questions? Um, do can we have the graphs like this? Mm, yes, that's fine. Graph looks okay. Just I just want to double check one of the uh, formulas, like. Just click on B, maybe 37. Perfect, you have the right formula. That's perfect. And then we can use 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Oh, definitely. Any number you want. Um, okay. Yeah, it's perfect. And then just after I fix number seven, just submit it like it is. Yes, you want me to double check uh, other numbers? I think you know. Yes, please. Yeah, everything else is good. And maybe just quickly check B, 27, let me see B27, uh, 1.44, yes, let me check the formula, perfect, great, everything looks good, perfect. Cool, thank you. Okay, no problem. Right. Uh, okay, talk to you later. All right.
Hey. Nicola. Hi. Hey. Actually, I was with your other classmates, so they have a long question to answer, so that's why. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Um, yeah, I just had a question on the Excel project number one. Definitely, definitely. Um, should I share my screen? Yeah, sure, please. Okay. So I had a question on six and seven. Um, I just get confused on like where to put parentheses. Okay, all right. Yeah, sure. Um, maybe enlarge, enlarge the Excel file. So click on that green button on the, on the let me see on top. Yeah, green, green circle, you see? Okay. Green circle. Yeah, just click, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Um, uh, maybe just click on B31. Okay, and then we look at it together. B31. Okay. Yes, very good. So now let's see where you, yes. So I see, you see that for that denominator three times three, it should be in the parentheses. Uh -huh. You should, so like this? not that one, not, not that one. It's the one, yeah, divide, yeah, after division side. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and close it. So two parentheses. Yes, yeah, exactly. And now let's take a look at the other one. This is good. And after five, we should put a parentheses. The second five. Yes. Second five. Because it's a numerator, right? Yes. Very good. Okay. By three. And uh, get rid of the last parentheses right after two. Yes. Good. Now it's perfect. Okay. So I just get confused. What's a good way to like know if you're doing the parentheses part correctly? Yeah. You see, any time when you see division has more than one number, you see, three mm -hmm. is, is like a variable term, right? So it's it's more than a number. It has to be in the parentheses. Mm -hmm. Also, usually when the numerator is it's like lengthy, it's like this. It's quite long, right? You should put it in parentheses. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know it doesn't you know bump into other you know operations. Right. In here, so here in the numerator we put into the parentheses, right? From four all the way to five, four times this five minus two X plus five should be in the parentheses because it's numerator mm -hmm. in parentheses. And then denominator, since it's not a single number, we also put into the parentheses. Mm -hmm. Okay. That and that's general sense. principle. Um, just try to avoid any confusion. So Excel doesn't take it wrong way. Right, because I, I got like three different numbers every time I, I know, change. I know. <laughs> yeah. And then last question I have is this one. Am yeah. I supposed to put a parenthesis here as well? Yes, great intuition. Yes, you should. <laughs> okay. but, uh, you see, it's more than one number. So if it's a single number three, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. but three times negative two. So Excel will raise to three power first. And after that, multiply by negative two, which is not right, right? We want right. To negative six power. Right. Okay, that and makes more sense. The, the, I think B28, you put in the wrong number, should be positive one, not negative one. Click on the uh, formula. Yes, it's positive. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no worry. Yeah. And um, yes, any other question? Um, no, I think that's it. Okay, very good. Okay. I think you have a um, perfect answers. For now okay thank you um and then one more thing mm -hmm. where exactly do i find excel project number two? Oh, i haven't posted it yet i'm gonna post it in a second and uh, let me answer a lot of your classmates have questions right now so mm -hmm. let me oh, I see. yeah let me answer that question i will post it shortly okay thank you so much bye bye Hey, Vincent. Vincent, are you there?
Hi, Professor. It's a, yeah. So a lot of your classmates has questions. So I just got off with some of them. So um, I, I see you raise your hand. So that's why I joined your breakout room. Yep. Sorry for waiting. <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. I was just working on the lab. It's OK. All right. Cool. Um, but so I just had a few questions. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, for starters, um, hold on. Let me find the number. Sure, you can share your screen if you want, and I can. Look okay. Um. Yeah. Let me try that. Cameras. Yep. Um. Hold on. Just give me one second. Your time. All right. uh, okay, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it, definitely. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so I, I was kind of, for starters, I was kind of confused with number four, with the E, because um, I was looking back at how we done it, how we did it, and I was just like trying to reference that and use that, but I wasn't sure if I really was executing it correctly. No worry. Uh, can you click on cell B24? Yep. Yeah, it looks perfect. Yes, you have the Real? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is perfect. Okay. Um that's good. And then yeah. and then number seven too, it, just because it was a long one, I felt like it tripped me up a bit. Okay, yes. Um you're missing some parentheses there. But uh, let's click on um B40. I'll show you where to put in the parentheses. So right now, um four X plus four, right? That's a numerator. That should be in a parentheses. So um, in front okay. of you. Okay, wait, so the, the 3x. No, actually, um, 4x. 3x is good. That, that's fine. No confusion there. Okay. But 4x plus 4. Oh, okay. There we go. Like that? Yeah, right? exactly. And okay. put into the parentheses, right? So after the second four, put a closing parentheses. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Um, after the second four, close the parentheses? Exactly. Gotcha. Also for denominator three x, that should be in the parentheses as well. Okay. Yeah, very good. Like that, like doubled. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. And also four times five minus two x, adding five. And the whole thing is a numerator, so we're gonna put a parentheses right after the, um, not not in front of four. That's fine. After okay. the second five, right? In front after of the previous side. Yeah, exactly. Like, like that. Exactly. Very good. And, and then is, are these, since it's a denominator, it's like that? You got it. Cool. Yeah. Um, Very good. Got it. Okay. So then, yes. So you can the other ones, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to fix these as well. No problem. So this one was right. That's the. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. And then that. Perfect. Um, and then mm -hmm. that, and cool. that. You got it. Yep, okay. you put zero because we have a zero here, right? We have a zero. Yeah, yeah that's what that was, I was confused with that. I was like, shouldn't that number be zero? <laughs> it is, it is, you're right. <laughs> gotcha, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna fix all these just real quickly, if that's okay. Um, definitely. Um, oh, um yeah. good. Perfect. Okay. And then um for this one I was um just okay. something really quick, Vincent. For yeah. question six is off. So okay. click on B thirty-five. So make sure you put an exponent in the parentheses. So so three times negative two should go into parentheses. Oh okay. And the whole thing, right? Okay. Very good. So that's good. Yes. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think it, do I have to do it with this one too? Uh this one oh, wait. Yes, I did it. it should be. Yes, you should be. You, you should put two times negative three minus yeah. one. The whole thing in the parentheses. Oh, okay. Wait. So it's uh, shoot two times, yes, two times negative three. Two times 
negative three. And minus one, right? Get rid of that parentheses. And okay. Move it after negative one, right? You minus one and close parentheses. Like that? Yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so same thing here. Let's see. So it's not, it's two times four. Yeah. Two, two times four. Yep, right. minus one. If it's, wait, so what does the EXP mean exactly? The E, like the it's E. A, it means E raised to a certain power. Okay. Yeah. So so when when I see like E raised, that just, I put that in as EXP? Exactly. And I don't need to indicate that it's raised at all? No, it's not. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do these first three look? Looks great. There's no mistake okay. there. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm just going to fix this. Okay, and then um, for this one, I, I was kind of, I, I was like a little unsure how to do the, the seven, um, this one, and what was the next one? Um, um, all right, so you shoot. Did you get a chance to go over the videos? Um, I can look over those. Yeah. Um, are they there? Are, are, Let's do this. Them? Look over that, and let me post the Excel project number two, and then um, I can come back later. If you do not get it, I can come back and I I will show you step by step. But maybe cool. you read the video first. Maybe you you will just understand it. Okay. Awesome. All right. Try That'd that. be really helpful. Okay. No problem. Thank you so much for, we'll come for back. that. Let me know if you couldn't figure out, I'll come back, I'll help you out. Cool, thank you so much. No worries, Vincent, all right. See ya. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay. Hey, Neil. Hi, I, I was actually able to figure it out, but thank okay. you. Okay, I was with uh, your classmates. They have a lot of questions, so I just got off with them. So. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'm just doing the homework right now mm -hmm. um, because I need to look at the lecture video that we just did before I do the Excel, but I'm, I'm doing fine right now. Thank you so okay. much. No problem, okay. Any question, let me know, right? Okay. Thank you. All right, okay, no problem.